You already know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. A hey, scary TikToks. You up to bet. Bitch, I'm drowning up in it. Most of you niggas is lazy. Half of you niggas full gazy. Yeah, I be spitting that crack shit. Cause I was born in the A. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water, man. You already know what it is. The kids to be free in 2023. The kids to be free in 2023. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another scary TikTok. I think these are like real scary stories. But this is like an hour long. So this is for the real ones here. This is for the real ones. I don't care if you got to watch it, come back and finish it. But this is for the real ones. If you make it to the end of this one, you a real one for sure. And you got balls of steel. <sighs> Let's go ahead and get it. Fire Squad was popping. Let's get it. Well, we thought we had a ghost story for you tonight about an old state hospital that was haunted. But when investigative reporter Jace Larson started looking into it, he discovered a place with an even more question. One old hospital that's reportedly filled with the spirits of patients who never checked out. I think you probably ought to clear. I don't think that's something good, dude. I really don't. I'm getting a really bad feeling. My body is like oh, shaking. Does. Like I feel like I'm like on like a shaking table. I've never really had it go that way before. Oh. So. What? Detail. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. What? what? Hold on, man. What was that? Oh. Okay. Okay. You guys see these details? This is not a joke. This is not a joke. What the hell? I saw somebody peek around the corner. I saw something. I should have. No. Nah. Okay. Nah, this gotta be fake. Stomach bro. is in knots right now. No exaggeration. Joy. Joy. Dude, let's go. We used to take freshmen there just to tell them all kinds of ghost stories. Make your way over here, please. Can somebody make a noise real quick, please? Somebody make a noise. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hell nah. Hell nah. They can keep that. Mm -mm. Trust your horses. Horse, he can sense danger. Oh, it's no, a dude in the car. Come on, no clunkers. He ain't need trying to go. Away. What's going on with the horse, man? Oh, just sorry. What happened? I think it's when Peggy oh, yeah. is in the back of your car. Peggy. <laughs> Whenever he sees your car, he's like, oh my God. Oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> what? I don't really know why. Look. Yeah. <laughs> he's just having a tiz. <laughs> What's happening though? Like, what, why is he tripping? Bonkers. My goodness. See you later. What's the danger? Look at my horse's reaction. I said I would. I'll see if I heard anything. It doesn't seem to want to leave. It's odd. What's your horse reaction to what? Hey. hey. He said, I'm out. Hey, nothing. I guess. I don't know. That wasn't scary at all. This is maybe the scariest urban legend I've ever heard, and it ended up being true. Back in the oh, 1970s, shit. there was this terrifying fun house in Long Beach, California called The Laugh in the Dark. And there was always this urban legend that all the mannequins inside were fake, except for one. Also, mind mm. you, this is what this week's episode is about, so if you don't want spoilers, just listen to the episode. This urban legend came to be because there was one mannequin inside that just looked wrong. All of the mm. other ones looked fake, but this one in particular looked way too human. And a bunch of the kids also said the area that the mannequin was in just smelled really, really bad. So mm. a few years go by and one day a film crew comes in and is using Laugh in the Dark for a film set. 
The director's lining up a shot and he just doesn't like the way this one mannequin looks in frame. So he goes over to a crew member and he's like, hey, can you just move this out of the shot? Mm. So the crew member goes over and starts moving the mannequin when its arm pops off. And inside of the mannequin's arm is human bone. The what? had been totally right. The mannequin was a mummified body. Whoa. There's so much more to this story, like who the person was and Whoa. how they got there. And I talk about the whole thing this week on the episode. Whoa. Whoa, they put a mummified body in a, a come on, man. was inside their kitchen when something pretty terrifying. He don't know what to do. Oh, shit. Hold on, my brother. Boy, you better be careful, boy. That ghost don't like you talking to her like that. Hey. <laughs> Babe. Hell nah. Just as the argument was getting intense, a plate from one of the cabinets falls on its own following that another plate falls by itself, but not before being flung toward Damien. Mm. It's almost as though whatever had chucked it had done so to end the argument between the two. Right. But as of that wasn't creepy enough, this next video is by far the creepiest. Oh, I'm getting chills. It's late at night and Crystal's alone at home. Oh, shit. We can see her scrolling through her phone. When out of nowhere this happens. Oh, shit. Look, she is scared as hell. This door just starts sliding open? Between the oh, two. Oh, snap. But as of that wasn't creepy enough, this next video is by far the creepiest. It's late at night and Crystal's alone at home. Oh, shit. You can see her scrolling through her phone. When out of nowhere this happens. Ooh. Oh, shit. Is that a... Is that a face right there? Oh, shit. She not even gonna move. Bro, is that a face right there? Thinking that Damien had come home from work early. She waits for him to appear, but seconds pass and no one is seen. Damien isn't there. Understandably, Crystal was shaken up. Hell yeah. But it seems that this incident wasn't as scary to Crystal as the most recent occurrence. It's oh, not known shit. what exactly happened, but it's evident that whatever had just occurred has left the couple no choice but to leave their house. Absolutely. In a recent video, Damien explains the situation. He depressed. You mad? You gotta leave? I mean, it's your dream home, I guess. Yeah. yeah, he fucked up. We're just, so we're um, just outside because it's getting weird in there. Mm. We don't feel safe being in there anymore, so we're just gonna go to a, just an Airbnb. For Damn. The night and uh, just for the night. She crying or something. That's, we're gonna figure out. What happened that night? Went to the, uh, the activity has become so intense that they can no longer live happily inside their house. Mm. Sadly, they have no choice but to leave behind their dream home. In the hopes that things would settle down. I'm out. Feeling hopeless, they book an Airbnb and spend the night there. However, the following night, they decide to return home. And try something that would hopefully solve their problem. Oh, shit. According to them, try by what? doing a seance. They can reach out to the supposed spirit that is haunting their house and Did ask it to leave. Hard? They do just that and record the entire process of the seance. I think I've seen this one. Little did they know this would be a bad idea. I think I did. This is their video. I've seen so many of these. I think I've seen this one. Y'all let me know in the comments if we've seen this one. I think because this seance thing kind of. Okay. I don't know. I've seen this one. Okay. I think so. They chose to do a seance by themselves. Hell no. Nah. Is it a seance handbook or something? Close your eyes.
stay in here doing a seance, bro. What is about to happen? I don't remember. What they doing? Where did they get this bell from? Nothing happened. At least nothing. Yeah, why is she looking like that? Yeah. Yeah, y'all wanted to do the shower it. Shower door begins to shake on its own. With this, the couple rushes out of the bathroom, understanding that something had gone wrong with the seance. Shit. Terrified by the incident, they leave the house and return to the Airbnb. To the couple, the safest plan for now is to stay away from home. Hell yeah. Given what's happened, this is probably a better idea. But until they come up with another solution, their house remains abandoned. So then, with all that's happened, just what exactly is going on inside their house? Sell their house, man. Until any updates are given. It seems that this question will have no definitive answer. But as always, what's your stance on this? Sell the house. Paranormal or not, you be the judge. Sell the house and get out of there. That's my solution. The moment the lights come back on, you have to stop, okay? You have to pause. Okay. Okay. Okay, ready? This shit about to be crazy. Okay. Whoa. Okay, one more time, okay? You ready? What? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this is the real country <laughs> footage. On the evening of Wednesday, July 29, 2015, Stephen Mackerel went out with his brother and some friends to Lucky's Tavern, a popular bar in downtown Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay. Stephen's brother left the bar at 11 p.m. to go to work the next morning. When he noticed Stephen was intoxicated, he told his brother to go home and drive safely. But the night was still young, and at around 1.30 a.m., Stephen and his friends left the bar and agreed to meet in the parking lot of a nearby Walgreens to plan their next move. Mm. But Stephen never made it to the Walgreens, and his friends never saw him again. What? Stephen lived with his parents and worked as a professional poker dealer at a casino in Hollandale Beach near Fort Lauderdale. When he didn't come home the next day and didn't show up for work the day after that, his family knew something was wrong. Police reported that there were several surveillance systems in the area where Stephen was last seen but they said it might take weeks before they could gather the relevant footage. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, investigators interviewed the friends and family members who had last seen Steven. Thinking that he might have gotten into an accident due to his intoxicated state, police conducted searches in many different lakes and ponds, mm. but nothing important was found. The search became even more complicated when investigators learned that Steven's phone battery had died at the bar. Because the phone was never turned on after that night, it was impossible for police to use the phone to locate Stephen. Jeez. At the time of his disappearance, Stephen was 25 and had a one-year-old daughter and a long-term girlfriend he had plans to marry. Mm. And his friends and family claimed that he was not the type of person who would voluntarily walk out of his life and mm. just vanish with no explanation. Unfortunately, some of the footage that was found during the investigation suggests that Stephen's disappearance was not at all his choice. Whoa. Two weeks after he was last seen, police discovered that Stephen had used his credit card at a gas station in Pompano Beach about an hour after he had left the bar. Mm. It was about a 15 mile drive from the bar to the gas station, and nobody understood why Stephen had even taken that detour in the first place. Somebody took him? Stolen? Kidnapped? This lady arrived at this house at 5 a.m. and rang the doorbell. She Four. appears to be lost or confused, maybe even without a place to stay. 4.45, asking for help getting home. Help you? What? Hi, I'm so, I'm so, so sorry. I'm, um, I'm kind of stranded right now, and I can't back to back, get back to my house. 
I'm, my house is on Spring Street right now, and I just, I don't even know how to get back to it. What? Um, I can't help you, I'm sorry. Is there any way that you can help? Nope, can't help you. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Hell no. Nah. Some people never seem to mature. They continue to engage in childish behaviors, just like the individuals in these situations. What? What, they just turned the sound off? I guess. This is currently the most terrifying video on the dark web. It was published anonymously, so we don't have any more information. But the ending will call everything into question. What the f- What? So this dude doing stuff in front of a mirror and it's not doing the same thing that- what? I can't even see what she throwing up. She look crazy. What? Mm -mm. This family from Mexico was able to record this terrifying video of this girl after she was acting extremely strange. This was after the family did some research. They found out the girl was playing the Ouija board. Here oh, is the video. Shit. Pay close attention. Hold on. You don't play with them shits. Which one was playing with the Which one was playing with the Taking a long time. Let me back up. I don't trust this camera. This camera work is shit look It look real skeptical right now. Like someone could just pop out at any any turn. Back up. What? I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. Someone's out there. Let me Someone's see. out there. Where? Where? Holy crap. Where? Someone's out there, Kyle. I'm not joking. I swear. What? Close the door. What? What? They in an RV or something? Man, you better pull off. Are you joking? No, I, I caught it on camera. Somebody right there. Is it locked? Is it locked? Yo, he's not there anymore. You caught it on the yeah, Bro, get out of there. Yo, he's not there anymore. Yo, there's nobody there. there. Holy crap, yo, yo, there's nobody. What, what, yo, what? Yo, what? Look what? No way. What? Yo, what the hell? Yo, I'm scared. What? what, he in front of you? Yo, 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 he's getting in your car, dude. He's getting in your car. He's getting, he's getting in your car. Yo, how do I open this shit? Open it, open it. Bro, how do I open it? They get out. Hurry up, hurry up. Take it to the car. Oh, no, no, is it no. gone? Is it gone? No. Oh, he stole his car. Oh my God, no, he just no. Took our only way oh, yo, who the hell was that guy, Jake? I knew I saw something. Yo, we can't now. do anything anyway. Put up your drone. Follow him. Right. 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 Quick, hold the camera. Hold the camera. Hold the whole time. The real conjuring house. What? This is the most chilling picture you will see today, and let me explain why.
18-year-old Samantha Koenig was working at her job in Anchorage, Alaska when she was abducted. Her abductor assured her over and over again that he was only abducting her for ransom. Samantha was waiting for her boyfriend to pick her up from work because she didn't have a vehicle of her own. So this man sent a text message from Samantha's phone to her boyfriend, basically letting him know that she was going away for the weekend and to let her dad know. Mm. But Samantha's boyfriend knew that this wasn't like her. And to cause more concern, her boyfriend caught a man going through his truck outside of Samantha's home. The mm. man was searching for Samantha's debit card. Samantha's boyfriend hollered at the man and ran back inside to get help. But by the time he came back out, the man was gone. Weeks go by and Samantha's boyfriend gets another text from her phone. Mm. This time it says, Connor Park sign under pick of Albert. Ain't she purdy? In Anchorage, mm. there's a park called Connor Bog Park. And at the time, there was a poster of a missing dog named Albert. So police show up to this location and they find this. A photo of Samantha holding the Anchorage Daily News and requesting that $30,000 be deposited into her account. Mm. While Samantha's father and the community come together to get this money so that Samantha can be returned home safely, they have no idea that in that picture, Samantha is already gone. She had become the victim of serial unaliver Israel Keys, mm. who had sewn her eyes open for proof of life. We talk about this case in full detail on what? the most recent episode of my podcast, Oddities on Elm Street. It is one of the worst cases I've ever heard. What? And to make matters worse, before he could disclose all of the information about his victims, Israel Keys unalived himself in prison, but not without leaving behind 11 skulls believed to represent his 11 victims mm. drawn in his own blood. What? Glitches in real life. What? What? Late at night in Las Lunas, a lady arrives at a homeowner's door, appearing extremely scared. She rings the doorbell and asks the homeowner for a phone call. The situation is perplexing, as it's hard to determine if she genuinely needs help or if there's some kind of trap or deception involved. Right. In such uncertain circumstances, it's essential to prioritize personal safety and caution while considering how to assist the lady. Absolutely. It might be best to contact the authorities to ensure both her safety and the homeowner's well-being. Absolutely. Hell no. Nah. Can you have the door? What? They open the door? They open the door for her? Hell no. Nah. What, they talking to her or something? Hello? Hello? Can I help you? I would not open the door for that shit. I'm sorry. Whoa. What the hell wrong with the AI granny? Hell wrong with AI granny. Garage door closed on its own, prompting them to leave. Seriously, Thinking that the cool. homeowner hadn't seen them, they returned later with two more men, intending to rob the garage. Mm. Oh, they stuck in the garage? Oh. Dudes is, man. Dudes is crazy. Dudes is crazy. Hell nah. They came back with the squad. Scariest things caught on home camera security. Home security, security camera, my bad. Stole garage door openers from car. In Dallas, Texas, check her out. 
Somebody right there. What's up with people knocking on people's doors? Oh, they was about to rob that spot probably. If you still use one of these things, you might want to take caution. In what? the mid 80s, 17 year old Jason Finley was found deceased in his bedroom with zero evidence as to what happened. Hmm? Jason was in good health and there was no evidence in his room that would suggest there was any kind of foul play that night. Hmm. It wasn't until an autopsy revealed blood in Jason's inner ear, which points to an electrical surge of some kind. What? And that's when the pieces of this puzzle finally started to come together. Jason happened to be on the phone while there was a bad thunderstorm that night. Ooh. And all it took was for his house to be struck by lightning oh. and that electricity to travel through his telephone wires. Damn. The girl that Jason was on the phone with also admitted to hearing a weird clicking noise, a gasp from Jason, and then silence. Which Damn. that kind of makes sense. When I was a teenager, I remember thinking that this was a complete myth, but it's not. It actually has happened and claimed several lives. Mm. But thankfully, that risk has greatly reduced due to less and less people using these kinds of phones. Mm. Unless you're a cell phone user that decides to use your phone while it's charging during a power surge. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. It's the most terrifying true story footage caught on camera. Some water? It's Experienced a very scary moment when she arrived to pick up her daughter. Two year old girl came to see me and take care of some She was left behind. Her mother was only 15 minutes late. What? Left behind? My mother was understandably upset as her child was locked in a pitch black room? What? She's immediately calling out for one. Yeah, she's crying. She's crying. Whoa. That's crazy. Okay, honey, how old is your child? She's two. Hell no. I'm coming, baby. Okay? I'm coming. Our friends arrived. They broke down the door to free the little girl. She was alone in the dark for over 30 minutes. That's foul. That is foul. Delete it. That's crazy. Can I show you a scary video? Slight trigger warning, this video did make me jump. This video comes from a YouTube channel called True Horror POV. This video was uploaded in 2020, and they actually claim it was based on true events. Mm. I'm just going to show you the video. Here it is. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you. I don't know what's about to happen, but she said she jumped. adopts a five-year-old girl, but when she learns to speak English, they discover the horrifying truth. The story begins when this family fostered this girl for many years. They had taken her in when she was just a baby and she couldn't speak any English. And when she turned five years old on her birthday, they decided to adopt her. But little did they know the five-year-old girl had a secret. She could barely speak any English, but once she turned five, she began to learn a few words. The family had a hard time communicating with her until one day everything changed. The five-year-old girl appeared upset, and when the family went in to comfort her, she said something that had everybody in shock. What? What? Time to move out. What the hell is that? The dog's just not going for it. Look. What the fuck? 
too scared to open my door. Heard my own voice calling me from the other room. What is this? Heard my own voice. Come here. The reason I had to move out of my flat. I was home alone. What the f thought my dog was looking at his reflection. What? Gabe? That's not my mom. Gabe, it's your mom. Did I? What do I do? He better not open that door. Please don't open that door. I don't want to see it. Then what's your name then? Real story of Kyoko, Ooh. the grudge. A real story. I ain't never heard of this shit. One day, her husband was snooping around in their bedroom and found her diary. When he read it, he became convinced that she was cheating on him. Mm. When she came back home from work, went upstairs. He was waiting for her, holding a knife. He attacked her, beating her and slashing her viciously, Damn. right in front of their young son. Kayako tried to flee, but her husband chased her. He was almost out of his mind with rage. Covered in blood, she slipped and fell, mm. breaking her ankle. Desperate to escape, she crawled down the stairs. But when she reached the front door, her husband grabbed her, took her head in both of his hands, and twisted it around, breaking her neck. Kayako was still alive, but she was paralyzed. Damn. The only sound she could make was a hoarse death rattle. Her husband dragged her upstairs, put her in a black plastic bag, and left her in the attic to die. Then. He got their son and drowned him in the bathtub. What? And stuffed his body in a closet. Because she died in such pain and anguish and rage, Kayako came back as a vengeful ghost. She appeared to her husband and strangled him with her hair. What? <sighs> Whoa. <sighs> Fuck wrong with this dude. Bro, what the fuck is wrong with him? Oh, his eyes glowing and shit? Hell nah. This shit is getting crazy. Do you know the real story behind Teletubbies? Mm -mm. The real story of Teletubbies is taken from a mental hospital in Bulgaria for a group of children. Mm. Lala has a distorted face that makes her smile all the time, and she always sat in her room alone in the hospital, so she used to dance alone without music, so her skin turned yellow because she wasn't exposed to the sun. Mm. Tinky Winky was seven years old, 
and he hit himself on the wall until his head cracked so they had to tie him up with a rope so he wouldn't move. And because of the rope and restrictions that were on his limbs, his limbs turned all blue. Boo mm. was with them in the hospital, and when the fire happened, they forgot about her, and they didn't save her until her skin turned red. Damn. And for Tinky, he was always hungry and sad because he was depressed, and when they gave him food, he would throw it away and never eat it again. And this mm. is their story in short. So Teletubbies is a mental hospital, but there is only one question left. What's the question? What, what was the question? saying you're trying to kidnap a young girl? This is Helmuth Kolb. He approached a mother and daughter at a Walmart and followed them to the parking lot where he would offer to buy the eight-year-old daughter for $100,000. What? He became angry when the mother declined and the police were called. He was arrested for violating probation because, and this is, this is going to shock you, he's done the same thing before and gotten into trouble. Bro, what? This terrifying video was caught on a ring camera in Henderson, Nevada. Help! Help me! Help me! Help! Help! Help me! Damn! Help me! This is really scary. If anybody recognizes this couple, please contact the Henderson, Nevada Police Department immediately. Jeez. I hope she's found safe. <sighs> this shit is crazy. Go home at night, don't turn your lights on immediately after you get in your apartment. Especially if people can see the windows of your apartment from the street. Because if someone's following you home, they're gonna know what apartment you live in. Mm. When I got home tonight, I got out of my car and there was a man getting shit out of his car. I had never seen him before this morning when he was in my apartment complex area. Um, and he just gave me bad vibes, but whatever. I get out of my car at night and he tries to make conversation with me about my headlight because it's out right now. Mm. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I know. I just have to get around to it, whatever. I go inside, don't turn the lights on, mm. but I have a feeling to check my ring camera He's standing in the street, which is very close to my apartment building, staring at my building. Mm. And he did not leave for like five minutes. I mean, like halfway through, he left the empty parking spot and hid behind a car, but he waited to see. Mm. Um, so now he knows what car I drive and where I live, just not my apartment. So don't turn your lights on. Mm. That's free game right there. That's free game. Let's talk game. about one of the creepiest videos going around the internet right now. The Uncanny Valley Man. I'm gonna be honest, this video can either be really funny to you or really creepy. You tell me in the comments when I show you. But this video went extremely viral on Twitter. Like, look at look at these numbers. And it was posted by user Disturbing Vids, who of course didn't put the original creator of the video. But that that it's fine. But the video itself shows a man exploring an abandoned building when suddenly this happens. <laughs> What? يعني هون معقول هان اخوان؟ Whoa. Don't turn your back. How you gonna turn your back on that thing? So you playing. Get the fuck. Winner. Hell nah. He gonna pop up again, watch. And that's the video. I wish we had more context on it. But what do you guys think? Is this a paranormal entity? Is this someone wearing a mask? Or were you just so dumbfounded by the uncanny valley that you found this funny? I don't know. That shit look crazy. You guys remember the, the Ronald McDonald statues on the benches back in the day? Yeah. You know the story why they took it off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a case one time where there was two guys late at night, two, three in the morning, sitting down, eating McDonald's on the bench. And they were super tired. And one of them wanted to go through the trash away. And then the other friend that stayed on the bench and sat on Ronald McDonald's lap. And he said, man, I'm so tired. And Ronald McDonald like responded to him and said, yeah, so am I. And this dude died. He had a heart attack. Yeah, that's scary, bro. I got chills and my bro, eyes are watering. Imagine that shit. <laughs> 
What? Hell nah. Hi, can someone explain to me why this man is not in jail? This is the owner of Return to Nature Funeral Home in Colorado Springs, Colorado. After a report of an abhorrent smell on his property, authorities raided it and found 115 improperly stored decomposing bodies. The what? CBI announced today that that number has actually risen. The number of individuals found is up to at least 189, and they said that number could increase. This man and his wife were selling grieving families fake ashes, allegedly. So why is this man not in jail yet? Can they not get him on anything? Whoa. Surveillance Whoa. footage from inside the gas station shows Steven entering the store at 2.26 a.m., appearing to be intoxicated as he stumbles around the store, shopping for snacks. His behavior doesn't seem to bother the store owner, and less than a minute later, he walks to the counter to pay for the snacks with his credit card. For a few minutes after that, Stephen had a casual conversation with two young women who were inside the gas station, but this happened out of the camera's view. Nearly a week after the initial footage was revealed, police obtained additional footage of Stephen that completely changed the course of the investigation. The CCTV footage shows Stephen standing next to his 2013 white Ford Fusion in the parking lot. He seems to get into some sort of altercation with the driver of an unidentified silver sedan, and as the silver car pulls away, Steven takes a step back and throws what appears to be his drink at the driver. Mm. He gestures with his hands at the driver as he gets into his vehicle, and three minutes later, the silver car circles back into the gas station, this time pulling right behind Steven's car. The driver's intentions are unknown, but as soon as Steven pulls away in his Ford, the silver sedan speeds after him. Mm. This was the last time Steven was seen alive. All police knew about the driver was that he was an African-American man who had walked shirtless into the gas station store a few minutes before the incident, but was never identified. Mm. For eight years, Fort Lauderdale police have been searching for Stephen's car. His license plate was never scanned by any license plate readers, indicating that he never left the Fort Lauderdale area. Mm. Search teams have combed through over 20 bodies of water looking for the car, but nothing has ever been found. Disturbingly, during the searches, almost 20 other vehicles have turned up in nearby lakes, ponds, and canals, including stolen vehicles with bullet holes, but nothing relating to Stephen's disappearance. Not even a clue. Damn. As of 2023, detectives and investigators still have no idea if Stephen was involved in an accident, or if he became the victim of something much more sinister. Wasn't that the dude from early in the video? Or no? I think that's the dude from early. Eesh. If you see someone behaving like that, run, even if it's your own mother. Her mom had been acting very strange over the past few days, so she ultimately decided to film her. What she captured is truly terrifying. Hell. Look at her eyes. Unfortunately, the end of the story is even more Terry Fing. Hell. After capturing the video, she encouraged her mother to go to bed. However, after about 30 minutes, she began to hear odd noises and found that her mother was no longer in her room. So she decided to search for her in the woods nearby the house. I will show you now what she discovered. You can see her mother, or rather, what she had transformed into, but her mother didn't seem to recognize her anymore. She went in the woods? Hell nah. No. Hell no. This is why you should always be aware of your surroundings. Why are you talking? A woman like was walking home one night with her child when this happened. Why is he talking like that? Everything's normal until a man comes out from the darkness. He then proceeds to go to the door and start banging on it. seemingly trying to get inside to the mother and her child. Hell Ali Porath, the mother who was seen in this video, later took to social media to explain that this all happened at around 7 p.m. at night when she was returning home from getting groceries. She explains that she had seen that man before, waiting out alone in front of her house, mm -mm. just watching. But ever since this happened, she hasn't seen him. And that's why it's always important to be aware of your surroundings. That's real. You got to be aware of what the hell going on around you. Hell. What? 
Ellos nada. <risa>
Doug would be scanning the area of this roller coaster, looking at it, trying to figure out which parts to oil while it was still active and full of passengers. Mm. As the ride began going through its famous loop, Doug McKay was standing right underneath it. Unfortunately for Doug, his hair would be blowing straight up from the wind and it would cause it to get caught by the wheels on this roller coaster. Whoa. After his hair was caught, the momentum of the roller coaster was just so great that it swooped him off his feet and just started carrying him along with the other passengers. Oh. After a short while of being ragged all through the air by this ride, there'd be a piece of metalwork that was sticking out and it would go across his throat, cutting it. The cut wouldn't be enough to kill him, but it would be enough to spray blood all over this little boy by the name of Dylan Bowles, who was directly in front of them when this happened. Damn. He would be the only one out of 30 people on that ride who got sprayed by Doug's blood. But the worst was yet to come. While Doug was still barely alive, the ride would loop the loop again, and this loop was so great that it tore his scalp clean off his head. The separation of his scalp would free him from the roller coaster, but with his throat cut and his head scalped, it sent blood spraying everywhere wait for it directly on a class of children who were standing in line for another ride Hell. after these poor kids had been sprayed with blood doug would continue his journey through the air and crash into this beam that folded him in half like a lawn chair he would finally die after hitting the concrete that was below him but the impact was so great that it caused his guts brains you name it to splatter everywhere and remember kids were here Oh, and the icing on the cake, the splatter from that would get all over another bunch of kids who were just unfortunate to be walking by at the time. Damn. Gross. After this mayhem finally came to an end, the police and the fire department would come by really fast and try to cover up everything, but it'd be too late for the people that already saw it. Mm. The Super Loop 2 would be closed for the remainder of the summer and be used as a sort of memorial for Doug. Mm. Like and comment for more stories. Damn. All right, those were scary true real tiktoks boy if you made it to the end of this one i need you to drop real one for real this was crazy it was a lot of stuff in there that was it seemed real and then some of it seemed like it wasn't real but it was a lot of stuff man make sure y'all being safe especially when you out there at night coming home Make sure you checking your surroundings. Don't open the door for people. Look, man, it's crazy out there. But if you made it to the end of this one, you a real one. Till next time, self-love and positivity. Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Yo.